dudes, Did the Builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about memory layout in Zig, and specifically the memory layout of structs. And this is an important topic when we're talking about uh, low-level programming, because uh, once more we see how Zig offers you uh, total control about the layout of your uh, data structures in memory. And uh, thus, you can uh, make the most efficient uh, use of your memory, which in, in many cases, like for example in embedded programming, um, the memory is a very much constrained resource, okay? So, let's start out with uh, what's known as an extern struct. An extern struct is compatible with uh, C structs. They basically follow the rules of the CABI, the Application Binary Interface. And what that means is that uh, the layout in memory of an external struct in ZIG will be uh, exactly as it would be if, if we were working in C, with the same uh, data types and the same uh, fields. And uh, in the case of that CABI, uh, the rules basically say that you have to preserve the order of the fields, okay? You can't rearrange the fields in memory, so here field A has to come before field B, and field B has to come before field C. And uh, you have to um, fill in any uh, unused uh, area of memory by a field with padding, okay? And that's necessary because of the topic of alignment. Each data type is going to have a size, okay? Your U16 is 16 bits, so it's going to take up 2 bytes. U64 is going to be 8 bytes, and U16, once again, 2 bytes, okay? So if we, we uh, have a total here of just the bytes required by these data types of the fields, it would be uh, 4 plus 8, 12 bytes in total. Okay, but we have the issue of alignment, and alignment basically dictates that um, each data type has what's known as a natural alignment, which is a multiple of uh, a power of two, and um, each uh, field of such a type um, has to start at a memory boundary, which is a multiple of that alignment. Okay. The natural alignment for a U16 is 2, okay? And in the case of a U64, it's 8. And in the case of a U16, is 2. And since we have these uh, different data types within the same struct, what's going to happen is that we're going to find like a, the least uh, common uh, multiple of those alignments, which is 8. And then we're going to use that alignment for all of the fields. So, what does that mean? It means that if the field takes up less memory than 8 bytes, okay, which is the case here on field A and field B and field C, um, we will have padding added, so those fields actually take up uh, 8 bytes, and, and so the B field can start at an 8-byte uh, alignment boundary, okay? So, what does this mean? Uh, we're going to be seeing in the output of this program the, the size of the struct and uh, the byte offsets of the different fields, okay, which will help us understand what's going on in memory. So let's go over here to this tab, and as you can see, it says that the extern struct has a size of 24. Uh, field A is at offset 0, so it's at the beginning. Field B is at offset 8. So that means that field A takes up 8 bytes, and then starts field B, and then at offset 16, we have field C, okay? And since the uh, total size is 24, then we know that field A, B, and C, there are, th there are 8 bytes each, which 8 times 3 is 24. So, let's take a look at uh, a little illustration of how this looks in memory. So, and here in the browser, uh, we have an image of basically how this would look in memory. Um, each one of these little boxes is uh, a byte, and those little divisions inside would be the individual bits. So inside each box, we have eight bits, which make up one byte. So here we have, uh, in this line right here, we would have 16 uh, bytes. And basically these numbers that I put 
under each box would be like a hypothetical memory address. Normally memory addresses are much more complex than this, but uh, just for illustration purposes, this would work. And what do we have? That offset zero, memory address zero in this case, if you're starting from the beginning, we have field A taking up uh, eight bytes, okay? And uh, since it's a U16, we know that the actual data is gonna be just the first two bytes. And then the rest of the bytes are gonna be padding. Um, then we have field B, which is a U64, and it'll take up all of its eight bytes, okay? No padding needed there. And then we have field C, which again is a U16, takes up just two bytes, and the other six bytes are going to be padding, okay? So the C ABI, and in the case of Zig, the extern struct, is going to follow these rules, and since it can't change the order of the fields, and, um, and it has to respect uh, those alignment boundaries, uh, we're going to be seeing padding used and uh, as a result, this uh, may be not the most efficient arrangement in memory because, as we said, um, in, in, in reality, this uh, struct would only need uh, 12 bytes, the 8 bytes from the U64, and uh, 2 more bytes uh, from field A, which is a U16, and 2 more bytes from field C, which is a U16. So that's a total of uh, 12 bytes in total but we're actually using twice that space in memory due to the requirements of the CABI, okay? So it's important to have that in mind. Now, the next type of uh, struct that we're gonna be looking at is what I call the normal struct in Zig, which is a struct that, that you uh, uh, define with just a struct keyword and nothing else like we're doing here, like we've been seeing all along in this course. And uh, the difference here is that Zig has uh, free reign. It doesn't have to follow the rules of the CABI. So it can do whatever it can to uh, produce the most efficient and optimal memory layout. And in that case, it can change the order of fields in memory. Um, so it doesn't have to use as much padding, okay? So if we go back here to the output, and we look at the case of the normal struct. We're going to see that it's now only using 16 bytes, okay? And, and we see that field A is at offset 8, okay? So now field A isn't at the beginning. Field B is at offset 0. So it moved field B to the beginning of the memory layout. And then field uh, A would be the second field, okay? And it's at offset 8. And field B is at offset 10. So field B, is, uh, sorry, field C is at offset 10, which means that it goes after A. And as you can see also, uh, field A isn't using eight bytes, as was the case over here with the extern struct. Now, uh, since field C is at offset 10, we see that field A is only using two bytes, the two bytes that it actually requires, okay? So being able to reorder the fields uh, eliminated that uh, extra padding that, that we had uh, to uh, insert in the case of the extern struct. Now we don't need that and uh, we only have uh, field B taking up its full 8 bytes and the other two fields only taking up the, the two bytes that they require. And um, in that case, uh, since uh, the next, if we were putting uh, this struct in an array, for example, of these types of structs, then the next struct boundary would have to be at, uh, at a multiple of the, the alignment, the largest alignment. And since we're talking about uh, the largest alignment is eight, uh, the next multiple would be 16. And that's why this struct then has to at least have uh, take up 16 bytes in memory. And that, that, that padding to make up from the 12 bytes that we're using here up to 16, which would be only four bytes of padding, would be added after uh, the data for field C. Okay, so the ability for Zig to rearrange the fields in memory allows this uh, type of struct to use less memory. Okay. Let's go back to the illustration where we can see here 
this is uh, the one at the top here is how Zig uh, uh, lays, lays out its struct and memory. We have field B taking up the whole eight bytes here at the beginning of the layout. Then we have field A only taking up two bytes and then field C. And these, lights, they, these last four bytes would be the padding, okay? And as we can see, uh, the third type of struct that we're going to be looking at is the packed struct, okay? And uh, the packed struct is uh, a, 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 an interesting type of struct because it will uh, retain the ordering of the fields but it will not use any padding between the fields, okay? So in this case, we will have field A first, and then B, and then C, but we will not have any padding after uh, the data of field A. Um, we will have field B immediately after field, B, field A, and then field C. We, we can have the situation that if uh, to reach the next struct boundary in an array, for example, uh, we may need some padding at the end. Well, uh, there may be some padding at the end, but the pack struct will never introduce padding between fields, okay? And it will uh, retain the ordering of those fields. And this will be uh, a really interesting uh, type of memory layout uh, with interesting uses, but as we will see later on when we see how we can even do a bit cast of a pack struct, okay? So if we go back to the illustration, here at the bottom, uh, we have this configuration. In this case now, we have the uh, field A is first with its two bytes, no padding here. Then we have field B with its eight bytes, no padding, and then field C with its uh, two bytes. And once again, um, these last uh, four bytes to reach that 16-byte uh, uh, boundary would be padding inserted but we will never have padding between the fields, okay? And uh, that, uh, as I mentioned, that allows us to, to treat a struct as, uh, as, a, as a solid data type where you can reinterpret this memory in another way as we will be seeing, okay? Let's go back to the terminal. And uh, what we will be doing in our main function here first is, as, as you may have uh, deduced by the output, we are printing out the information out of these uh, three uh, struct types, okay? Let's look at the output for the pack struct. The pack struct, as you can see here, also requires only 16 bytes. But uh, the field order is preserved, as you can see here, as we saw in the illustration, field A starts at offset 0, field B starts at offset 2, and field C starts at offset 10, okay? Now what we're going to be seeing in our main function, uh, aside uh, from printing out the information, is that uh, that packed structs can be uh, bit casted, so we can do a bit cast of a packed a pack struct into another type of uh, pack struct and uh, as we saw in a previous video a bit cast basically what it does is reinterprets the memory as another type without touching the bits the actual bits in memory so uh, this is possible in a pack struct because precisely there is no padding and the field order is guaranteed to be the same as in the source so if we go here down to the bottom of the file, we have these two struct types, which are both packed structs. This one uh, named whole has only one field of type U16, okay? This one named parts has three fields. One named half is a U8, and we have a Q3, which is a U4, and a Q4, which is also a U4. So basically, this would be the half of this U16, and these are two quarters, okay? So what we're gonna do in our main uh, function here is we are uh, precisely creating here an instance of whole and assigning it here using the hexadecimal integer notation, one, two, three, four. And then we do a bit cast of that uh, variable that, that holds that instance into the type parts, which will be in the variable p. 
And then we print out first uh, from the instance of Ho the num field, okay, in hexadecimal here notation using this uh, format specifier. And then we proceed to print out from P the different parts, the half and then the two quarters, okay. So here in the output, this is what we're seeing. As you can see, in the whole uh, instance, we have the number as we uh, defined it. And then in the parts, the half will be 3, 4, and quarter 3 is 2, and quarter 4 is 1. And here the order, uh, if, if it's surprising that the order may seem like reverse, it's that we're dealing with uh, the endianness of this architecture. I'm, I'm, I'm on a, a little endian uh, Mac M1 machine. So uh, this is why the, the, the order of the bytes is in, in what would seem reverse order, right? So that's a little uh, gotcha that you have to be aware of. The, when you're doing these types of bit casts, you have to be aware of the endianness, okay? So basically, uh, that would be it for uh, the different types of memory layout of structs in Zig. So I hope you find this content useful. Um, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.